Hi, this is Brian. This is part two, the part two video of the document, The Importance of Morning Affirmations and Powerful Prayer. If you haven't seen part one, please go to part one first because this is a continuation. I believe the document's five pages and this is starting with the end of page two. I encourage you to get Joel's book and begin reading it. There are sections on scripture which really inform me on who God is, who I am, and scriptures for various parts of life. Blessing, comfort, confidence, courage, deliverance, and more. Once I read through the book, I marked sections on affirmations and scripture and read parts of them every morning. After weeks, my mind started to change and I looked differently at the world and also differently at my life. Just to let you know, the reason I thought I bought Joel's book was after watching Joel Osteen on TV. And I also was watching his videos on YouTube. You can listen to Joel's messages on YouTube, but I will say that the book was more should be more powerful for you. Of course, you can make your own affirmations and read them either in the morning or all throughout the day. Affirmations steer your mind toward believing what you are reading and speaking, so use them. Prayer, I guess the most honest sense, is talking to God from your heart. It's connecting, excuse me, it's communicating how you feel, what you need answers about, what you desire to know, and anything you're uncertain about. There is a point there was a point where I didn't pray. I feel that I'd been through such a traumatic experience that God wouldn't or couldn't hear me. My heart and my soul had been broken and shattered to the point that I felt very, very different than my first days as a Christian. I felt that prayers would not be heard because my broken heart and soul. This was a lie from the enemy. About two years ago, I was meeting with some Christians in my house. They were missionaries. And I wrote down questions for them. Questions like, I feel like I've broken my heart and my soul so much that I can't feel God like I used to. And I asked them for answers. What would you do if you were me? They answered they'd continue to seek God, pray also, and reread scripture that's important to me. Over time, I stuck to their advice, started daily prayer, bought Joel's book, and started powerful prayer. Oh, excuse me. And started powerful daily and bedtime prayers from the Ransomed Heart Ministries. <clears throat> I found that prayer, I found prayer to be very strengthening for me. Luckily, in the recent past, I found Ransom Heart Ministries. I bought one of their books and visited their website. I found that the prayers they had listed on their website were so long. I wondered why I couldn't just talk to God my way, with my own words and desires. Yet I started praying these long prayers in the morning and at bedtime. Generally, they cleared my mind, reaffirmed my faith, and protected me from the things you'd consider evil or from the enemy. The enemy finds ways into our mind, body, and soul, generally through our sinning. We open the door to evil by sinning, whether we are conscious of this or not. And once a door is opened, that is when our thoughts and our actions may suffer the consequences of the evil or the enemy. We are at war. Many people don't know this, and that is the enemy's wish. He wants to go undetected and in a way undermine our beliefs, and in doing so, have us increase doing actions and thoughts that hurt us. His lie is normally subtle, but as we continue in sin, thinking it's no big deal, that everybody does it, we may start to have problems in our life. For me, it was almost total physical breakdown in which I was ill enough to quit work and college. God has, 
God has a life laid out for me and for you. Continuing in a path that gives yourself glory, seeking life for yourself with no acknowledgement of God, which is exactly what I did for years, will eventually break you down. Once that happens, you'll search and search for answers about why it happened to you. You'll probably even blame God for your predicament. For years, after I had a traumatic spirit, for years after I had a traumatic spiritual and physical event in 1997, I recovered, and instead of resuming my faith walk, I sought after desires of creating wealth with no regard to God, with no prayers, with no faith. I'll make a note here. I did occasionally meditate. My life was all about me. Hindsight tells me that the mistakes that I made and leaves me sad. Yet understanding that those years God was using to teach me that I needed His knowledge, guidance, and protection. I can only educate you from my experience and realize that we're all different and on different paths in life. Again, we are in a war. The war is a spiritual war, and we need to take the right steps for protection, learn from our past, and move forward. There's always a future for you. Yet if you lack hope, as I did, you need to take action. Waiting for change did not work for me. What worked after a life of me, 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 me was reaffirming my faith and learning more about how God could help me. Help that was not from God, excuse me, help that was not God speaking to me, but more in line with me taking action, saying the right affirmations, reading the right books, reading inspiring scriptures, saying my own prayers, and being grateful for things, and doing powerful prayers. So what are powerful prayers and where do I get them? First I must say that they have helped me immensely and I pray them daily. I saw the prayers, I first saw the prayers on Ransom Heart website. I printed these prayers out, the daily prayer and the bedtime prayer, and I found they brought me not only insight into who I was, but I was also energized. I felt better after I prayed them. The prayers confirm who you are, who God is and Jesus are, and give you the understanding to stand against the enemy. So I encourage you to visit the Ransomed Heart website and review the prayers there. They also have a smartphone app that you can pray whenever you are. I'll read that again. They also have an app so that you can pray wherever you are. They also have a membership portal on their website that I joined. I was searching for more healing and I was searching for more healing for my broken heart and soul. Luckily, God came through. There was a seminar called The Restoration of the Heart. I liked the seminar so well that I sat down and I took notes one whole afternoon. Now that I have the notes, when I'm feeling a bit weak, something I've had for three years, I read through my 20 plus page notes of Restoration of the Heart and it reminds me that I've been through some a lot of trauma and it gives me some solutions in healing my heart and soul. It was a miracle to find Joel Osteen's book. It really put me back on track somewhat. Then recently finding healing through the ransomed heart in the restoration of the heart seminar was, was another miracle. I used to call this serendipity but now I see the, these tools and an, as an answer to bringing me back to life after three years of struggle and lack of hope. I do hope this information has been helpful. I realize it's not for everyone, so perhaps you don't need this level of direction. If you're in a dire situation, I encourage you towards personal Christian counseling and try what I have instructed above soon. Thank you for reading. Thank you for watching. I'm wishing you well. Brian. Feel free to share this information in the, the document. The link is below if you're watching the video. And you can print it out. You can reach me on Twitter. Um, my Twitter name is at 
and then my name, Brian Morgan, all together with the word now after my name. You can go to Joel Osteen's website. He's got the, the book that I mentioned in part one called Fresh Start. Also, Ransomed Heart has a, a website and also a smartphone app. On both locations, you can find the prayers um, that they have. Again, thank you for watching.